singers, four back, two, two bass singers, three outside singers, and a chorus of bell music.
uh, playing some music, and Michael and Tabitha, who are singing some pieces, and Chloe is singing as well. Thank you. Yeah. And what? Yeah, and Grandma. Grandma's singing too. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. I'm just so glad I'm. <laughs> Anywho, uh, for those who would like the Christ in Our Home devotionals, uh, the small version, the small print version, is available in the narthex. Uh, we did not receive the large print copies that we normally have, so. Uh, when they come in, we'll make them available to you. If you have not picked up your 2021 box of offering envelopes, we invite you to do that. They are in the narthex as well on the table over by the coat racks. Uh, we, we ask you to take those tonight. And if you ask us to give you a hard copy of the newsletter for January, those are also available out in the narthex, but they're on the bench. So please pick yours up. It keeps it saves us from having to mail them out. So with all that being shared, I invite us to prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
He lived to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel of multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who do favor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, place your words upon my lips, and in my heart that I may proclaim your truth. There are many pastors out there who have much more experience, have been ordained much longer than I have been. But I have preached on this particular passage that we heard tonight for the past 15 years on Christmas Eve. Now maybe they feel the same way I do in asking the question, how can I proclaim the good news in a way that brings newness to our faith commitment? I pondered that question in preparation for tonight. I can imagine that the author of Luke's Gospel may have also been asking himself a similar question as he was preparing to write the Gospel of Luke. He had at his disposal several resources telling the life of Jesus. One such resource was the Gospel of Mark. In that Gospel, the author watches right into the story. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's from Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The author of Mark's gospel used the Greek word euangelion, which literally means good messenger or gospel. The root of that word, also a Greek word, obviously, euangelizo and euangelion were not originally Christian words. In the Roman Empire, these words were often used to describe an imperial conquest or a Roman emperor's birth as good news. Thus, even before Mark, or excuse me, before Luke, Mark had employed this politically charged term, good news, to describe the life of Jesus. But while Mark then starts in with the adult John the Baptist proclaiming the coming of Jesus, Luke adds the infancy narrative. This was one way that Luke told the good news in a new way. He added this, blood, this beginning much more detailed than Mark. In 
what a beautiful beginning it is. Jesus is born, Luke says. And Mary wraps him and sets him in a manger because there was no place for them. What could be more natural than a mother providing warmth and a place for their infant child to sleep? It's such a normal human act, isn't it? We might even say that it seems commonplace. The beauty of the detail that Mary wrapped Jesus in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger is in the explanation. Because there was no place for them. There was no other place for them. This tiny family had been displaced far from home. They can't even procure the kind of accommodations that usually would be available for travelers. Yet, Jesus' birth, his very presence, calls Mary to extend hospitality to provide for him and welcome him into the world. And she does, without fanfare or public proclamation of this infant king's birth, as you and Jelly Holmes could do. The scene then switches to a group of shepherds watching over their flocks in the fields at night. Again, this is a description of a fairly everyday occurrence in that time in history and in that part of the world. These shepherds are going about their normal routine. Unlike Mary and Joseph, however, they are in a place that they know best. Doing what they know how to do. Suddenly, here in an unlikely place and to an unlikely audience, we hear the dramatic pronouncement of Jesus' birth as good news. Our familiarity with the images can obscure the fact that Luke paints a picture of spectacular grandeur. An angel of the Lord appears, and the glory of the Lord shines around them. The shepherds hear this otherworldly creature proclaim good news of great joy. And then suddenly, the, the angel of the Lord is not the only one there. A multitude of the heavenly army appears and bursts into praise. No wonder the shepherds are filled with great fear. think we would be filled with great fear too. And even though the angel tells them, fear not, their fear probably didn't just disappear like that. Nevertheless, they chose to go and see this thing that has happened. That this other worldly creature proclaimed was good news. I wonder, would we have done the same? Had we experienced this 
otherworldly creature coming to us and telling us to go, would we trust enough to go where they told us? To go see this child born who would be king of the Jews. Luke's addition to the story of the beginning of the story of Jesus opens up a window for us to see the good news proclaimed in a new and refreshing way that gives new life. It also provides us the motivation to share the good news with others in a refreshing way that brings new life to them. Sometimes this can be as simple as providing warmth and a place to sleep as Mary did. And this way of telling good news anew might not be accompanied by fanfare or public acclaim. In fact, it might go totally unnoticed by everyone except the person being helped. Other times, it can be the reminder that God often works beyond the bounds of what we can see. And we might only discover that fact later from others, as Mary and Joseph did when the shepherds arrived. Still other times, good news will surprise and perhaps even terrify us, appearing when we least expect it, when we're simply going about our everyday, ordinary, familiar ways and places as happened to the shepherd. Luke teaches us that the euangelion is unpredictable and uncontrollable. <laughs> it defies expectations. And it's always breaking into the world in a new way. Let us help it spread among the people by proclaiming good news to all whom we meet in the world through word and deed. And the people of God said,
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light for light, through God for true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and by taking him. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the glory of his resurrection. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the glory of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has his holy truth in the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, for those who are resurrection from the dead, and the life of the world are not. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voice of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Heaven and nature sing, joy to the world. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world as rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expected parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion, we confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those affected by racism in our community and worldwide. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving Father, bring relief to those who need healing, hope, or restoration, especially thinking of those on our prayer list and those we now name in your presence. In your infinite love, you tenderly care for us and nurse us back to health. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is We give thanks for the saints who have prepared our way in the wilderness and taught us to continue our faithful work, especially Carl Simmons, Robert J. Strauss, Joseph Pinto Sr., Larry Shannon, William Gindelsberger, Gus Johnson, Anna McFadden, and Guy Jacobs. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is We pray for peace in the world and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace, as we lift these and all our prayers to you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's presence.
Christ peace.
to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the love to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, my Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, upon earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. bread and wine. Come meet Christ in this meal. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.